My name's Lindsay Mark and today we're going to take a look at one of the most commonly sighted mammals, the fox. In this short video, we will find out about a fox's life, diet and where it lives, as well as some adaptations that make it a great hunter. We'll also share with you some hints and tips to help you see foxes in your area. The fox is our only wild member of the dog family. Most people are familiar with its bushy tail, its red coat and its pointy nose here. Foxes have evolved to suit their habitat and are perfectly adapted for their lives. They're superb hunters with a finely tuned set of senses allow them to catch prey and escape predators. Foxes are found all over the world with 37 different types, but the type of fox that's found in Scotland is a European fox, Vulpes vulpes. The size of territory of a fox can vary dramatically from 25 hectares where there's lots and lots of food to 4,000 hectares in southern uplands when they've got to hunt and really try hard for their food. Its teeth, had this skull had any, would have big canines, much like a dog, and the grindy teeth at the back, and that shows us some of the food that it likes to eat. It is really designed to eat a whole lot of different foods and it is omnivorous so it will have anything from eggs to beetles to fruit to scavenged food to meat like rabbits that it's caught. And the fact that it has such a diverse diet lends itself well to living in almost every habitat. So you quite often find them in farmland, in woodland, in garden and urban areas, in towns. There's so many different habitats that these creatures can survive and do well in. We've got a female fox, which is called a vixen, and a male fox, which is called a dog, and the babies, which are called pups. They can be quite territorial, so they often don't live in big family groups. Quite often there's a male with one or two females in his territory. Cubs or pups are born in spring and there's usually four to six on average in the litter. They're born deaf and blind and they stay below the ground for two to three weeks. And they start to come out about four weeks from when they're born and they turn from a kind of brownie color to the more orangey color that we're used to. Let's take a look at the colour of a fox. It's actually much more camouflaged than you would think. Look at a picture of this fox here and just how well camouflaged it is. The fur is nice and thick, which helps keep them warm, and it doesn't feel unlike a cat. If we look closer at the eyes, you can actually see some cat-like similarities as well. The vertical slits. This controls the amount of light that gets into the eye. They have fairly good eyesight with some colour vision and their eyes are really good at picking out movement, especially silhouettes against the horizon. Interestingly, they also have reflective cells at the back of the eye. It helps improve the night vision of the fox. Look at these ears, they're highly mobile. They can face them in different directions and the sound is caught and funneled down the ear canal there. It helps pinpoint distance so well when they can independently move them. Not only can the fox jump two metres high, it can run up to 45 miles per hour, pretty fast. You can see the long nose here and inside the nose cavity there's lots of projections. These are called turbinates and they help with airflow regulation and they increase the lining of the nose, which increases the smell. It's said that foxes have a sense of smell a thousand times better than us. At the roof of the mouth, there's a special organ. This is called the Jacobson's organ and it picks up the scents and pheromones from other foxes and is used as a communication. Foxes have 28 different sounds in the repertoire. But 
there's a few that you hear more than any other. One is that kind of the male bark. And the other is the female vixen screaming, which is normally heard in the winter time, um, round about the time that they're mating. Foxes have another way of communicating and that is through scent glands. So they'll use the scent glands at the base of their tail to help them communicate. So this might be that they are in season or that they're just marking their territories. I'm fascinated by the fox's whiskers. In low light conditions they're going to be able to feel what's in front of them and feel if they can fit through gaps and fences or into their dens. Looking at the paws of a fox, you can tell it's got the perfect design for some underground life. It's got long sharp claws to be able to dig its den. In between its toe pads here, it's all furry and that helps it be a really silent hunter. If you've ever seen a fox walking, it'll place one foot in front of the other foot very gently, feeling exactly what's underneath it so it's not going to break any sticks so it can hunt efficiently. They don't spend all their time underground. A lot of their time is spent during the day and at night in these nests. These outdoor dens can be found at the base of an old tree, even in a little cave or just a little shelter over their heads. It must be quite cool and a good way to get rid of some of those pesky fleas. So we already know that where there's food there's going to be foxes, but we've got to know what to look out for first, some of the field signs. Urban foxes are definitely easier to see, they become accustomed to humans. We know foxes are crepuscular, so they come out mostly dusk till dawn, but you can see them all through the evening and during the day as well. The main field signs of foxes that you can look out for when you're on a walk are Footprints in the mud, such as these. Look for the four little toes and a small main pad. Narrow trails in the grass or worn paths. Feeding signs like these chewed up feathers. Smelly poo left to mark the territory. Holes in the ground where they might live or even little gingery hairs. Foxes have a fairly stable population. The biggest threat to them is, of course, humans, where many are killed on the road, and not everyone finds them as endearing as I do, but they have a really important ecological role to play. They help control populations of rodents and rabbits, and they also disperse seeds by eating fruit. I'm sure you'll agree these are fascinating and beautiful creatures. Good luck being your own nature detective and finding tracks and trails of these wonderful foxes.